Welcome back to our channel, Machinery and Technology. Today we have a truly electrifying topic, steel making. Steel making has played a crucial role in the development of ancient, medieval and modern technological societies. An important aspect of the industrial evolution was the development of the large-scale metals of producing metal, barn, iron or steel. The puddling furnace was initially a means of producing grout iron, but was later applied to steel production. So if you are ready to spark your curiosity, let's dive right in. At the beginning of the skill working process, the minor oils is treated by privatization and centralization. While the coal is processed by cooking coming from the trilation, the core of island desert iron reaches the parallelizing plant of fluid to a duct 14 inches in diameter and 180 miles long. The budge is subjected to filtration. The water is recovered in the dry or is sent to the pallets. Either this can be mixed with a blending agent to form small bowls called the pallets at 1,300 degrees Celsius. The pellets are seed hardened before being sent to blast furnace. Meanwhile, the cooking plants receive metallurgical coal by rail from the Corboniferous region of Poor Villa and threatened from the vertical ovens lined a factory break near 18 hours of baking. The coal is transformed to coke, the basic fuel for the blast furnace that produced pig iron or the first fusion iron during the process various bay products are contained among them. Coke oven gas appear used in the late stages of the steel making process. Another raw metal for the blast furnace is a cinder porous mass compound of iron or flakes or powder produced by the steel making process, itself blending with the line coke lines and dolomite produce a mix that is hardened and a continuous chain of them on the sinker plants process ironic coal. The basic raw metals for producing pig iron are sent to the blast furnaces, consisting primarily of a large cylindrical structure over 160 feet high, whose interior is aligned with the refractory bricks. In the blast furnace, the iron oxidized contained in the pellets in a simple reach are stone of the hopper facility, along with the limestone. Dolomite and the coke are reduced and are converted to pig iron, mixed in the proper amounts. These raw materials produce layers of various thicknesses when they are deposited in the blast furnaces. Through the changing system located on the pad, hot air is introduced under the pressure in the bottom of the furnace blasting. The coke and smelting the iron ore is environment of the about 650 degrees Celsius. In the lower part of the furnace, the graphite harbor crucible receives the molten metal, which then is drained through cap holes and through the pipe of the 200 mare stone capacity torpedo cars in order to eliminate sulfur. Content regions such as calcium, carbide, and magnesium are applied to the pig iron. In a dysphorization, plant the slag generated during the smelting is deposited in a slag pit to be cooled with water. It is a later store or sold as a byproduct for the conversion of the pig iron to steel also use the oxygen based technique of steel making cold womb basic oxygen. More than half of world steel is produced in the basic oxygen process which uses pure oxygen to convert a charge of liquid blast furnace iron and scrap into steel. The basic oxygen furnace is a refractory line, titable converter into which is a vertically movable water cold lens is installed to blow oxygen through nozzles of supersonic velocity onto the charge. The use of the pure oxygen is a high flow rate results in such fast oxidation of the elements contained in blast furnace iron that only about 20 minutes are required per heat to refine one charge. When oxygen contacts blast furnace iron, a great amount of heat is released by the ensuring exotromeric reactions 
especially the oxidation of silicon to silicon, so that using only blast furnace iron would result in a wicked steel temperature to high forecasting. Therefore, before the hot metal is added, a specific amount of scrap is recharged into the furnace. Melting this scrap consumes about 340 kilocalories per kilogram, effectively cooling the process. A typical BOP charge therefore consists of about 75% liquid iron and 25% scrap. This requires a reliable supply of low-cost iron with a uniform chemical composition, which is attainable only by keeping the operation condition of a blast furnace as contest as possible. This in turn requires a consonant iron consumer. There are also certain iron properties, for example the silicon and sulfur content, that are selected to optimize the blast furnace and BOF operation to produce steel at minimal cost. Such interpenner requires that blast furnace and BOFs work within a well-integrated operating system. Electric arc steel making. About one quarter of the rolled steel is produced by the electric arc method, which uses high current electric arcs to melt steel scrap and convert it into liquid steel of a specified chemical composition and temperature. External arc heating permits better thermal control than does the basic oxygen process, in which heating is accomplished by the exothermic oxidation of elements contained in the charge. This allows larger alloy additions to be made and are possible in basic oxygen steel making. However, electrical steel making is not as oxidizing, and slag metal mixing is not as intense. Therefore, electric arc steels normally have carbon contents 
higher 0.05%. In addition, they usually have a higher nitrogen content of 40 to 120 parts per million, compared with a 30 to 50 parts per million in basic oxygen stills. Nitrogen, which renders still brittle, is absorbed by liquid still from air in the high temperature zone of the arm. The nitrogen content can be lowered by blowing other gases into the furnace, by heating with a short arc, and by applying a vigorous carbon monoxide boil and organ still to the melt. The electric arc furnace is a squat, cylindrical vessel made of heavy steel plates. It has a dish-shaped refractory heart and three vertical electrodes that reach down through a dome-shaped removable roof. The shell diameter of a 10 to 100 and a 300 tone is approximately 2.5, 6 and 9 meters. The shell sits on a hydraulically operated rocker that tilts the furnace forward for tapping and backward for slag removal. The bottom, the heart, is lined with abandoned magnetic bricks and has one side of slightly inclined tapon of a spout ore and shown in the figure or oval heart of the vertical tapon. With this later arrangement, the furnace needs to be tilted by the 10% forward tapping, producing a tight and a short tap stream that decreases the lost and oxidation of the liquid still. Before charging, the vertical tap hole is closed from the outside by a movable bottom plate. It is filled with a refractory sand. 